What a show. What a show. I've got an all new Bizarre Animal of the Week that these guys are never going to guess. An awesome battle royale and forest cold plunging with a dead body. Mm -hmm. True story. And we're going to eat the world's hottest gummy bear. And I've already eaten one. And these are tears of joy. We'll see you there. Let's get into it. Wild times. Wow. He brought it today. I'm excited. Woo! Here we go. Wild times. <laughs> The only podcast. podcast that Joe Rogan listens to every single episode. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. Fact. Hard fact. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. How's it going, guys? That's great, man. Pink Good. trash shirt. You know, I, I'm going to start over there. I'm not your host. I'm just hanging out yeah. with Ray Professor, Tep. PhD in podcasting. Yeah. Great tap. Yeah, it's good, man. Uh, happy weird. to be here. Always happy to be in the newish stude. Yeah. I got some gifts for you guys. Ooh, oh, you're just gonna these pop were made right in? by yep. loyal listener. Oh, really? Wow. My, my niece, Danny, oh. made these oh, for us. that's awesome. Thanks, Danny. What is this? Forest for you. I have a blue whale chain. Ooh. Wow. Look that's at that. That's lovely. Okay. Thanks, Danny. That's very cool. I'm wearing this and for then, the pod. Uh, for Retep, I have, what kind of shark is this? A great white. Can I see it? Yeah. Mako. Is it a thresher? Greenland. A lemon shark. Oh. Here's a little lemon shark necklace. Oh, yeah. Lemon shark, baby. I love this. Yeah. Uh, what do I have here? Is it yours? Is this a reefer? Yours looks to oh, be... That's weak. No, it's like a dogfish or maybe a seven gill. Looks like a seven gill. All right, I have a seven gill chain. Yeah. Oh my God, my neck's way too fat. I gotta move mine <laughs> over. Is, is it too fat? It, it doesn't yeah. fit on you? No. You're heinous. Oh, I'm not heinous, yo! <laughs> All right. What is up? What's going on, Forrest? How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Happy to be here. It's the, it's the joy of my week when I get to sit in the studio with you guys and hang out. It really yeah. is. I am going to make it a little bit more enjoyable. I have something that uh, I'd like to give to each of us later on the episode that I think is going to be... Herpes. No, no chance I can put this on. I'm Very trying. entertaining. So look forward to that. And if it is not done, I want everybody to DM Pat and Forrest personally, repeatedly, until we do do it. So uh -oh. stay tuned for that. Two things. One, he said doo doo, and two, <laughs> I uh, did say doo doo. I just put my uh, my headphones within my necklace chain. What a mess! Look right. at this. Come no, on, this is good, dude. This is this. Yeah, is I can't believe that this fits is around. good content. Very good content. I'm just rambling over here while. <laughs> All right. Well, um, look, there's a lot of news to talk about. I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna have my magic mind. No, don't laugh. I, I gotta. I'll do a little I, sipping on the magic I mind. It. I gotta be thinking. I had a tough night last night. One of the kids is sick. My kid's yeah. always fucking sick. Yes. Yeah. Um, without question. And this just helps me one. stay sharp, stay focused, and I want some. So. I told you the way to do it. I he, have to sip he shoot, it, though. shoots them, I sip them slowly. Nah, mm. I like to take it all in. Kyle, Kyle, you like these a lot. How do you do yours? Love them. Shoot it. Shoot it, right? It's you the know. only way. Yeah. Well, Kyle also shoots heroin, so. That's, that's, that's for... <laughs> that's <laughs> that's for I true. almost spat my magic. Spit it out. Right. So, there was a news story that came out. What's in the news? Yeah, he's on the ball today, gentlemen. And I was like, holy shit. When I saw the headline and then Forrest was like, no, nah, you don't know about this. And I was like, no. Well, I didn't say it like that. I was just like, yeah. Yeah. Like, but I was like, when you see the headline, yeah. photographer captures leopard eating a crocodile mm -hmm. in a tree. <laughs> I'm interested. Yeah, that's that's I a want to bait. see that. Yeah. I'd be more interested if it said photographer captures crocodile eating leopard in a tree. <laughs> that would be that much would be something. Yeah. Before we get into this, I I could have sworn didn't you actually film a jaguar eating a caiman? Oh, it was yeah. a jaguar eating a caiman up in a tree though, like dragged no, it up. No, it into dragged a tree. it up a hill. You should pull that oh, up. That big it's got hill. thirty six million views on my TikTok. So what? So I mean, that's an insane number. I don't. Of I know nothing about TikTok. I don't even know. Is that good? I mean, I think it's good. I don't really know much about it either, but it sounds like a it's lot. It's a tenth of the population of the United States have right, watched, have this watched video. that video. That's an insane statistic. So, so uh, now is is this more impressive? Your video right here, Forrest? No, than this. So, okay, absolutely not. First of all, so <laughs> it's not because in the Pantanal where I filmed this on Jessica's iPhone. This is a common occurrence where the, the it's the place that people go to see jaguars attacking and eating caiman. Wow. Um, okay. Granted, I got a really, really good video. Yeah. But looks um, nice. Compared to a, a leopard in sub Saharan Africa with a Nile crocodile up a tree, that is a rarity. That's a decent sized crocodile. It's obviously not a massive one, but it's it's a pretty yeah. big croc. How big would you say that is? Uh based on the size of a leopard, probably seven feet, six, seven feet. 
End to end. Damn. These pictures are incredible. Yeah, these are fucking cool. Yeah. So where was, sorry, where was this taken here? Uh, it's got to be in Southern Africa. Kenya. Kenya. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Okay. There you yeah. go. So, so this guy, it, I mean, this leopard has taken this croc up into the tree just so it can enjoy its meal alone and in solitude. Yeah. So leopards always do that. Whether that. They're, that's a great photo. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Whether, whether they're killing an impala or yeah. uh, anything else. What's unusual about this is not the behavior. One, the photos are fantastic. That's yeah, the main thing. For sure. But two is the fact that you're seeing a leopard that killed, successfully killed and is now trying to covet this crocodile because that's what's unusual. In Africa, unlike in the Pantanal with, with the jaguars, in Africa, leopards don't often choose to prey on crocodiles. It's okay. too dangerous. Yeah, if you're yeah. a leopard, you go down the water, you drink, you get the hell out of there as quickly as you can because... Yeah. A crocodile, and on the flip side of this, Kyle, maybe find a video of a cro Nile crocodile attacking a leopard. Happens all the time. No thanks. Yeah. I don't want to um, watch it. <laughs> but in this instance, what probably happened is that that leopard found the crocodile in a small pan or cruising over the ground. Yeah. Those are cheetahs. God, people are stupid. Um, <laughs> is that a cheetah? Uh, that is a cheetah as well. That yeah. is a jaguar. That's a cheetah. Yeah, so so it's so it's really common matter. for these crocs to take whatever's yes, dipping but their it's nose not, in the it's water. It's not common to see an African leopard eat a crocodile. So that's pretty cool. So I wonder if the croc was like came up out of the water a little bit and then was headed back and it got it by the tail. Yeah, traveling over land could be in a small pan, you know, what we call a pan, which is like a puddle basically, like yeah. a seasonal puddle. Um Yeah, so so uh if if the croc was over land that it's done. Is that Oh, yeah. A leopard yeah. would have every advantage. The now, that's agility. a leopard there, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, Bro. what an absolute killing machine. Leopards? Just yeah, they're I, both of them. They're super agile and quick. What was that one Stocky. that we, we wrote that show? Was a Chumbawat? No, that was the tiger. Yeah. Well, remember the man-eating leopard in India that would stalk the, the leopard rooftop? of Rudraprag? That sounds about right. Yeah. Rudprayag, I think. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of famous man. Yeah. Rud Rudprayag. Yeah. 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 So what's this story? Uh, this this. Uh, oh, the guy went out there. And, yeah. Yeah. He there killed. was a Jim Corbett, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Jim Corbett, right. who Patrick and I both love, um, went out and killed this man eating leopard that in India killed one hundred and twenty five people. So wild, man. That's a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Like, imagine like if you were a guy in the war with a gun. Right. And you killed one hundred and twenty five people, you would be seen as like the most badass war hero ever. This is a kitty cat. Dude, that killed absolutely. People. And also like it didn't kill them all at once. They no. were made aware that this was happening right. and it was still right. uh, able to go and get it was, them. It was spread over a course of about seven or eight years. Yeah. Man, that is wild time. But it like drastically affected people's behavior, um, yeah. like when they would when they would work, when they would not, you know, like it was a fucking huge deal. And then yeah. eventually Jim Corbett came in and got it. It's like having a boogeyman. Just it's like having a serial killer, but worse in your neighborhood. Exactly. By the way, remember the pod we did a couple of weeks ago um, where we talked about the the game show where we have David Goggins run out? Yes. Oh, Jim, yeah. Jim Corbett would get. David Goggins. Easily. Uh, he's the only one who would. But he could track anything. Guys, yeah, Corbett would him. get Goggins. Pretty soon we're going to be able to make that with uh, V, uh, ver, I'm sorry, AI video. Sora? Yeah. Called yeah. Sora. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's insane. So you mentioned the ser like having a serial killer in your neighborhood. When I was a kid, <laughs> I did. when I was a kid, right? Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in Oswego, New York. There's a uh, state penitentiary in Auburn, which is maybe an hour away. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, uh, <clears throat> a murderer escaped, right? He yeah. escaped the prison. That's, okay. that's nerve wracking. Killed. Oh my God. And they didn't know where he was. Right. Mm -hmm. So my friend went out of town on vacation mm -hmm. and they had a house sitter. It was my brother's friend. Yeah. And he was house sitting and the guy was squatting in their house while they were on vacation. Holy and, and shit. He, he killed this guy. What? Yeah, it was this tragic. is like in your neighborhood. Neighborhood? It's a small Oswego. It's not tiny, but it's about twenty thousand people. Oh, that's wow. pretty small. So yeah, yeah, so everybody knows there's a escaped con from Auburn who's loose in our town, mm -hmm. and this was over the summer vacation, right? And this was when I was young. I was probably eleven or twelve. Oh man, so terrifying. You know, the whole like ride your bikes all over town. You know, blah blah blah. Like was not. Every, everything was like on lockdown for sure. like a couple weeks. At one point we were swimming in the pool and, 
<laughs> my friend's grandfather came running out with a shotgun <laughs> and he was like, he was just spotted. No <laughs> way. Get in the house. It's like, it it was like he's a nuclear crazy. bomb. I love yeah. it. The vigil anti justice. <laughs> but like, dude, it was wild. Like, you know, being 11, 12 years old and going to trying to go to sleep at night in the house with just my mom. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, there's a murderer like walking the streets, hiding out is pretty fucking gnarly. Yeah. That is pretty wild. Dude. I'm terrified if my foot dangles off over the side of the bed. Well, check, check this out. Kyle, pull up that picture. Peter. Yes. I'm a doer. Did you know that? You are a doer. You're I get one out of the biggest there, doers I know. I do things and I'll tell you something else. I love my doer jeans and I mean it. And I know that was a ridiculous setup, but I just <laughs> got back from Japan. I literally flew there in my black doer jeans and my, my like reddish t-shirt. I wore it on the plane. I then wore it every night to dinner and then wore it on the flight home. Didn't feel dirty. Didn't feel gross. Super comfy. Uh, you know, it's made from all natural fibers, so it's super stretchy and breathable. Uh, it's really like temperature regulating, and it has antibacterial treatment, which for me, who's like a future Howard Hughes, who's like terrified of germs, <laughs> that human make, didn't yeah. even worry about it. It's un- it's unreal, man. I like. I'm not joking. It's literally the best bottom half clothing I've ever worn in my life. It's, it's bottom half's important, dude. That's where all the good stuff is. Eesh, you got to protect it. Keep it antibacteria look trust me you need doer in your wardrobe uh order your new favorite jeans today check out doers flagship stores in la or denver or shop online at shopdoer.com slash wild right now our listeners get 20 percent off site-wide only available at our exclusive url which is shop doer d-u-e-r.com slash wild don't wait get 20 percent off now at shopdoer.com slash wild yeah they don't do other discounts either do nope. it. Do doer. Be a doer. doer it. Doer it. <laughs> March Madness season is really fun. I don't follow college basketball, um, but I like getting together with friends and watching sports and having fun and screaming at the TV. But I don't know anything about college basketball. I don't I went to Cornell. They don't they don't make the tournament. But I want to have fun. So you know what I'm doing? Putting entries in on prize picks. Um, you can get in on basketball's postseason NBA. We're talking about uh, March Madness. All you have to do is make up to two picks on player stats. You pick more, you pick less, and you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. So that means you can turn $10. Kyle, you need, you need money. You could use $1,000. You could turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, college basketball entries on prize picks. America's Number one fantasy sports app for a reason, because it's easy and it's fun. Um, here's what you do. Download the app today. Use the code WILD for a first deposit match up to $100. If you like free money, download the app today and use the code WILD for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It is literally that easy. Do you guys know where that is? Is that that's the creek by your house? No, that's the creek by my house. What Kyle, happened here? Scroll up, Kyle. At the at the Daily News Hawk. Look at this. The Texas. Oh suspicious. wow, that's the creek that I cold plunge in. So the headline yeah. says: Detectives investigating suspicious death after body found in. Dude, it was a whole. It nice. was a whole to do. Yeah, I'm like, sure. I was trying to get home in time to actually to go see our buddy Gotti. For oh, his, yeah, yeah. his show. I was trying to get home in time. Yeah. Road was closed off. Yellow tape. The whole fucking thing. They wouldn't let me in. I was like, that's my house. You can't that's keep me crazy. out of my own house. Had to go and get like the whoever the chief police yeah. officer was. Tell him. Then I was like, I have to come back out in 20 minutes. Like, I'm just showering, changing and leaving. He's like, yeah. no, no going in and out. I'm like, Dude, bullshit. No going in and out. Like, this is cre- my driveway. Yeah. That's my creek. What did they end up doing? They let you in and out? They did. But yeah. it was like a whole to do. There's fire trucks, police trucks. Turns out they said, I think the next day in the next article, yeah. um, that it wasn't foul play. It was the guy probably killed himself or something. But oh, yeah. yeah, just in Santa Barbara, where fucking nothing happens. On, Sleepiest on town Valentine's ever. Day, yeah. by the way, this happened. So maybe yeah. he was just depressed. I, I've had some some sad Valentine's Day, but I usually just go to a hooker. Now, see, that's interesting because I, I'm sure I've been single and not had a sweetie. On, on, a, on a Valentine's Day. No, you Day haven't. You're my, addicted to relationships. In my adult, <laughs> in my adult life, I, I, I'm sure... Th- I'm sure that I have, mm-hmm. but it's not something I could see affecting me. Like, right. Would you be sad if you were alone? With, no. Like, like, do you care about Valentine's I, Day? I haven't celebrated Valentine's Day since I was 17, 18. Yeah. Like, I mean, seriously, like yeah. this year, I didn't, 
I, not a card, not a flower, <laughs> not a nice meal. I mean, nothing. Like, yeah. there's nothing. I bought yeah. my son a chocolate bar that was in a heart shape. Yeah. That was it. That I, was what I, we did. I, I will say, I think it's even better than that. If you're single on Valentine's Day, that it's mm. like there's mm-hmm. a whole crew of people who are mm-hmm. also single who are laughing at the couples and who just want to go out and bang. Yes, well, that's a fantastic true. point. Kyle, What it, you're <laughs> single. You've, you've always been single since I've known you. This yep. is true, actually. Yep. Have you gone out like have you gone out on Valentine's Day being like, oh, tonight's a night that'll be good? <laughs> that'll be good. No, it's usually just me going out with my friends and hanging out. And- yeah, have you, just, have so you never you- tried to chase tail on Valentine's Day? Of course. Chase not. tail. So Kyle, what does it look like when you and your friends go out? Do you guys kind of just huddle in a circle and like chuckle? Well, I mean more, <laughs> more, <laughs> more, more or less, yeah. I mean, we kind of yeah. just, you know, sit around at a table. Who's at a bar the guy and- in your group? Who's yeah. the guy? For what? You know. Who's your graber? Yeah, who's oh. your graber? The guy who, quite frankly, we all have a guy. Yeah, everybody's got one. And it's very annoying. If you don't know what we're talking about, there's a guy in every group of friends. When you go out, you're like, oh, we're going to go like watch a game yep. and like eat some wings. And yep. you yeah. just want to have fun. Yeah. And there's always one guy who's like, yo, let's go talk to those girls. The yep. creeper. Yep. He branches yep. off. He's usually really good at talking. Probably the second most handsome guy in the group because the most yeah. handsome's a little bit shy. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, the he's, guy. He's vagina motivated. Whereas yeah. like- yeah. I, I wasn't I, I wasn't vagina motivated after I was like twenty four. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Like I, so, I, I've had enough crazy relationships that I'm okay to to not deal with this shit for so a little Kyle, while. Who's your guy? Who's your guy? Yeah. Who's I your graber? I don't want to out him, but his nah, you say his first him. Say his name. name. His name rhymes with, with Radam. <laughs> okay, so, so Adam, so pull up a picture of Adam. Yeah. What's his last Boy. name? Pull up a picture of Adam. Come on, right. Kyle. It's All good right. for him. Oh, it's I mean, good for him. I know our demographic of people that listen to this. Yeah. They want to see what your guy yeah. looks like. I they like how you're like, I'm Radham not going to out him. And the next thing out of Pat's mouth is <laughs> He's just pull up a picture. Just what's his social? Face. Yeah. yeah right. What's his at? Here he goes. No, no, his social security number. Oh, yeah. That's what That's Forrest. Nope, that's me. That's Kyle. He's like, this is our guy. Yeah, exactly. He's out there. Let's looking see. for tail. Oh yeah, yep. that's definitely. Oh, the guy. My that is God. the most guy. Fucking pocket guy. square. So clearly the guy. <laughs> fucking pocket, the pocket square. Let me square. see so another pic of this guy. Wow, Th- this is like his Tinder fucking. Pro- oh oh yeah. God. yeah, no question. He's the guy. He's the guy. Is that a big He's scar on his shoulder? Or is that a tattoo that's faded? <laughs> that's I, hair. I, this is brute. <laughs> oh, hair on his shoulders. Yeah, that's I have, definitely I have the hair guy. On his shoulders. I like yeah. him. I like him. He seems like a good friend. He's a very funny guy. He seems like I'm sure he is. I mean, I will say, comedy is a way to open a lot of doors yes if you're oh, funny yeah. it, it can be more entertaining than just being handsome and dull yeah well, oh, i mean of course you yeah. know this how because he's funny hilarious yeah. but and not handsome yeah and meager <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, yeah. yeah that's a good point though man i was never that guy and i was the guy in the in the circle of friends who were just like <laughs> yeah dude we used yeah. to play some pretty Same. pretty hilarious <laughs> games to so like it was part of rugby culture that's definitely died out a lot lately because I'm pretty sure it's sexist, but didn't used to be considered that. And so we used to have like these games and one of the games that we'd play was like a one liner game. So if you're, you're in your little nerd huddle and then I'd go to Patrick and be like, see that girl at the bar and you have oh, to pick no. a girl, single group, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I was like, you have to go to her. And then the game was like opening line. So you have to, I would give Patrick the opening line. So he, I'd be like, all right, Patrick opening line is check out my Ibis. <laughs> and would you have to come with me or I go solo? No, but <laughs> you'd be <laughs> honor system. <laughs> He's dying. So well, Forrest dies. Yeah. Honor system, but within earshot to make okay. sure it's happening. I, I honestly don't Check think my that Ibis, that's like the animal, like the bird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that one's pretty dumb. We would say things much more vulgar, but you just have to sit down next to the girl and it's, it's oh, the <laughs> vulgar things might be sexist. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly it's don't just think all in the delivery. Yeah, exactly. It's all in the, well, dude, I know because I had to do it 150 times. The, the dip, and if you go in, you're like, huh, it's all in my ibis. Oh, dude, yeah. it's, she's like, ugh. But if you're like, hey, it's all in my ibis. Bro, so she's I'm, like, what? You're I, like, how are you? I'm watching 90 Day. Yeah. I'm watching 90 Day, right? And they have this guy really? on there who's never had a kiss. And it's the single life version of it. So he's out trying to find a, a woman. How old is this guy? Like a male like, woman. Right? I think he's like 26, maybe 28. Never kissed a woman in his life. Never kissed ah, a woman, no. I, I'll tell you what, I could see how that could happen. He's he's morbidly obese, but I mean, That's the fact of the matter is, is he got yeah. real, no, on the show it is though, and he got, he got no screwed confidence. last season and he ended up being led on by some uh, guy that was posing to be a woman for four years that he fell in he love got with. catfished. Catfished, Ugh. and then, so they put him on this season to find a new mate, and Bro, the a dif- mate, a mate, the difference. Like a wildlife show. Yeah. That's right. 
the difference between like He's a bighorn sheep, <laughs> He's a, a guy man. who is morbidly obese and has never encountered a woman in the wild trying to to talk to a woman and like anybody who's talked to a woman before in their life or like has gotten laid once or twice is like insane, insane creep level for somebody who's not talked to a woman for the same thing, same words that could come out of a guy who has done this in the past, say the same thing and it doesn't come off creepy. It has to do sure. with like body language and just, dude, you're effed. I don't know how. Well, yeah. How do Body you language, inflection, these are all things that are incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Right, but we don't focus on them Like, enough. if you could tell me a story, and if I go, really? Yeah. Then you know I'm interested. Right. But you don't ever you Tell that. me the same story, and I go, really? Yeah. Then you know I'm doubting it and, uh, and disinterested. He did that really, really well, didn't he? <laughs> really, really well. well. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, anyways, I just thought that was interesting. How did we get here? I don't I know. know. Is there I, more I news? honestly can't. My, my fucking brain is like, Fire. The magic it's mind. It's the magic mind, dude. It's not <laughs> fire. I don't know what's happening. I know. It gets me, too. Mix That's it with some fat tire, up. and you got a good <laughs> work day. All right, what else we got yeah, in the news? True. Let's see what else is uh, is popping off. Yeah, what I do love shit on? like this story. Shit like this story. This Which is one? good. What do you got? What do you got? NASA and Google Earth Engine have teamed up with researchers to help save tigers. Oh, oh I love that's that. nice. We're using technology to our advantage. So sure. I love with it. With less than 4,500 tigers remaining in the wild mm -hmm. globally, right? That's, in the whole world. Yeah. That's all that's left. It's so crazy because they're like one of the most popular animals. You it's know, one of the coolest. More animals. of them in Texas than there are in the wild. Wow. So they teamed up and they unveiled this TCL 3.0, which is a program that utilizes satellite imagery and in really advanced computer processing to monitor tiger habitats in real time. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. So if you're monitoring the habitat, you know, you can monitor poaching, like of all sorts of shit Anything. like that. Yeah. Well, we talked about uh, something similar that they were doing with uh, AI. Training the in, AI. In a bonus pod mm -hmm. last right. time. It's, it's awesome when they do stuff like this. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just, it's, I just think it's really cool. No, but when they, <laughs> I was, we said on the bonus pod, we were talking about how when they use, like AI is scary, right? Everybody's scared that AI is going to take over the world and be a Terminator situation. So it's good when these stories come out and, and remind us that like, oh no, we can actually do some good with this AI oh, and definitely. like help these animals. So I think it's basically going to be used to like identify problems. Yeah, it makes sense. Like habitat loss, yeah, poaching. Looking then, for patterns. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. someone, human beings then still need to go do an action. Of course. Sure, for now, to help give it. it 10 years. True. Then, then the AI will figure the out how to The robots will be out there it's in full crazy. force. Just Dude, sends a drone out that just kills the poachers. This is also in the news, but not relevant to the story. Have you, did you see Joe, Joe Exotic's text? No, the other day, no, no. Kyle, or sorry, not text, tweet or X or whatever it's called. How's he now? tweeting from prison? Yeah, I Can don't do that now. You got to yeah. see this. Yeah, uh, God, let's hear it. Have an iPad. Where is it? So, uh, Joe Exotic, we we, dude, I remember one of our first podcasts. No, nah, just it, Kyle. Like it's a headline. We we had on the show as a guest one of the cameramen that filmed the Joe Exotic. The uh, that's right, Joe Exotic. Oh, yeah, I show. forgot about that. Yeah, that was that was wild. And then all that shit happened with him. He's now in jail for trying to murder Carol Baskin. Is that that's right? Is that right? Is this it for us? That's right. Joe Exotic says he was no. Okay. Uh, there, so his tweet says he like looks at Donald Trump and then goes on Twitter and goes. With a little bit of meth and a tiger, I could make that boy gay or something like that. <laughs> oh, nice. Beautiful. Fucking hilarious, dude. That's and imagine poetic. just like putting that on Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> it was so funny. I, I was like rolling over laughing. It's great. Oh, no, it was, it was Machine Gun Kelly, not Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. even Here more it is. Funny. Here it is. Here it is. A tiger and a little bit of meth, and I can make Machine Gun Kelly gay. <laughs> That's so good because it, it, he he's essentially like a cooler version of Joe Exotic. What machine gun? Painted himself I think black. I, I think I'd rather hang out with Joe Exotic. Oh, definitely. What a what a mess. Is He's a great storyteller here. I don't know, machine but I just Kelly. saw this tweet and just thought it was so. Like, imagine just waking up and being like, "Yep, that's what I'm gonna tweet." That's I, I mean, I think I know what he was saying, which is like, "This is the kind of straight guy that I targeted." Yes, for sure. Yeah. But he didn't say that. A little bit of meth. <laughs> he said a little bit of meth and a tiger. Well, he's you know he's Jesus. an expert uh, storyteller, Joe Exotic. He's an he's an Dude, expert he's, at getting into the limelight. He's an entertainer, that's for sure. The funny part is that he has nothing to do with animals anymore. He's just now a guy in jail who yeah, he's a mess. does crazy shit. He's a mess. <laughs> if that Netflix series had never come out, he would just be a guy in prison. I don't know if he would have been arrested. I mean, he might not have been arrested. 
I don't think he. Well, oh, no, that's interesting. Weren't, weren't they in a legal battle in the in the Netflix show? I think they I were, but remember. but it had to do. It didn't have to do with like the murder of our her. Actually, I. What did he get arrested for? Like uh, us murdering just Carol Baskin? No, no, because no, uh, she's he alive. Had, he sent a hitman. He oh, that's right. Sent that's a hitman right. after her. He that's right. bought. He paid for a hitman. That's right. He, <sighs> Which you can't do. No, you can't do. I swear to God, every time I hear about a hitman being hired, it's always like because that was an undercover cop and that person is now did, in jail. Did I ever tell you my hitman story? Of True course story. Not. Let's hear this. Forrest, I'm a uh, stinky guy. My wife <laughs> complains regularly that I don't shower enough. Gross but out. guess what, dude? I'm 100% serious. There is a new product called Mando, and this stuff lasts 72 hours, right? They sent me this starter pack with these wipes, this invisible cream, and this deodorant. I know you got it, too, because yeah. they sent us this stuff. Bro, I took, it's amazing. I took it to Japan with me, and I, I think I told you I got really, really sick for a few days. Yes. And I had this crazy fever where I was shivering and just pouring sweat out of every orifice of my body. And <laughs> those wipes are the only thing that kept me from being, like, not completely and utterly repulsive. Like, I'd literally shoot a scene, be, like, half dead, and go, like, wipe down face, armpits, everything, and back into the scene just so I wasn't as revolting as I seemed. No, oh, dude, if I was an adventurer like you, I could imagine this being like the best way to go. Game changer. So get your Mando starter pack. It's perfect for new customers. Comes with a solid stick, the cream tube deodorant, and then two free products of your choice. It could be the mini body wash or the deodorant wipes and free shipping. So as a special offer for our listeners only, because we go out and get you these deals, five bucks off a Mando starter pack with the code WILD. At shopmando.com. That's over 40% off your starter pack when you visit shopmando.com and use code WILD. Hey guys, if you like the show, I got good news for you. You can get a whole lot more. We do four bonus podcasts every month. That's one a week. That's 48 a year. That's right. Go to wildtimes.club slash info. Uh, you can subscribe on Patreon. Oh. You can subscribe on Spotify. Do it on Spotify if that's where you listen to Why would pods. you do that? What's the benefit? Um, you could also listen to all of the podcasts ad free. Ad yeah. free. Huge. You know, that's how we got this cool studio. We love you guys. Thank you. We love you. Just do it. Ow. Please. Please. We, when we first moved to Santa Barbara, we rented this house. It was like a pretty small house um, from the neighbor, basically. Not where we are now. Not where I live, but not where like, Oprah lives. No, no, no. Just like up in the hills, whatever. Yeah. And the woman who who the the landlord lived next door to us mm. like if she owned two properties side by side and just fucking hated my mom like within six weeks was like sending like weird death threat notes and all this really weird stuff so we didn't live there for very long we lived there for <laughs> less I, I, six months or something yeah and then my mom was like we got to move out like this is really really weird and the woman refused to give back our security deposit and so my, my mom, well, you didn't have much money at the time. So my mom went and got like a pro bono lawyer, like a pretty shitty pro bono lawyer. Yeah. And won the security deposit thing, which was like 10 grand. It wasn't like a lot of, uh, no, it wasn't that. It was well, like, that was like, that's a lot. No, it was like five <laughs> grand or something. I don't yeah. remember. This was like 15 years ago. Right. And, um, and then, you know, we won, she had to pay back the, the security deposit and blah, blah. We moved, never heard anything from her again. Like, oh, that was weird. I was a teenager at this time, yeah. you know, like moved, never heard anything from her again. One day, the police show up at our new house. This is over a year later. Yeah. Knock on the door, and they're like, hey, we wanted to check. Is everybody okay? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. And long story short, a man had turned himself in from Texas who had been hired by our ex-neighbor to kill my mother. Holy shit. That's how much this woman fucking despised my mom. She offered some guy $30,000 to kill my mom, and the guy went wow. straight to the police and was like, hey, this fucking crazy lady like just offered me money to kill this woman in california and likely this happened after you guys had already left if years, they were coming this was this was over a year after like probably two or three years after we moved so out she of that house hated your so mom she was nuts yeah nuts nuts that's what it was like so much so that the person she tried to hire was like a gardener or whatever and like went straight to the police and was like this is not so right. did she go to prison no, nothing happened wow. to her. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. So, yeah, because it was all yeah. hearsay. There was yeah. no paperwork or whatever. So nothing happened to her. Oh. But I guess the police went there and like 
you know, shook her up a little bit and was like, what the fuck are you doing? We know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. That well, was so, the end of it. Peter, but. what is our, when we talk about what a good night in a hotel room is, what, what is it? It's when we spent uh, a night in the Motel 6. No, no. What, what, what's, what is the thing that we talk about? Uh, oh, just like watching forensic files. Yes. You know, going to bed at seven, ordering a pizza, laying yeah. in bed, eating Not it. leaving the hotel room. Yeah, But exactly. there's been a million episodes of the show Forensic Files, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are a husband or wife hiring a hitman to kill their, their spouse for insurance money. Absolutely. It's probably 80% of the episodes. Is it really? Yes. But the... It's often like ten grand or less. Yeah, <laughs> and crazy. and these people all end up murdered because they're on a show about murders, right. right? So, but sometimes it's like five grand. Yeah, it's not a lot. And and the other thing is too, it's always they they do the show in such a way where it keeps you guessing as the the audience, but in reality, the cops figured out v v right away that there was just a. a $150 life insurance policy right. taken out <laughs> and that the, the spouse is the main suspect. Yeah, the recently divorced, been cheated on spouse sent yeah. somebody over. How yeah. could you think that you would get away with that? How? But it's so fucked up. It's like, I, you, it's almost like the person who, like the murderer gets fucked, the hit man or hit woman, yeah. but then the person who hired them also gets the same charge. As they should. Yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. I almost feel like they should get worse. They the, should. The they should. No, no, the, no, not the You know man. what's funny? The OG. It, yeah. And I'm not going to go into excruciating detail here. All you have to do is have a great understanding of biology. You don't have to fucking go hire a hitman. I, I can All kill, right, I can kill somebody. <laughs> no, I'm serious. 25 different ways with natural plants, venoms, things like that. That I can find within a five mile radius of my house. Oh, really? Good to know. Untraceable. Good to know. Yeah. How much easier is that than hiring a hitman? Just learn biology. It's what's, much easier. Go to school for four years. That's what's all you can. Can you get rid of the body? What's that? Can you get rid of the body? Can you dispose of yeah, the body? Feed it to my pigs. All right. Well, Allegedly. we all know his plan. With yeah. Jess. There Sorry. you go. Run, Jess. Run, Jess. Run. Uh, what is the venom that you could collect within five miles of your house? Uh, that there use? is no. Well, I'd have to. Uh, the best thing right now, in fact, growing on my driveway are death caps. Which is a, a you can mushroom. pull them up a mushroom that I could put in anybody's food and they'd be dead in forty eight hours. Jesus, do these grow? And, and rampantly? who's going to who's going to search for that? You know what I mean? The toxicology report's going to say poisoned. Yeah, but it's not going to say what. You know what I mean? Like I right. Granted, I don't know that much about like how. Well, you I, I like what you're report. doing here. You're making. I, I think this is a plea to your wife just to say like, hey, I, I just I'm going to put this out there so that you know. That you know, I'm I know everybody. Yeah. And if the that, kitchen isn't clean I, when I get home, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I had so I. I That's I'm so sure you guys up. are sick of hearing about it, but I've been going back and forth a bunch between here and Colorado. I had a lovely meal cooked for me a couple days ago. Oh wow! With it was elk. It was elk. Mm, Delicious, so like yeah. just like in this like brown, so kind of good light sauce, and it was with these mushrooms. And the the chef is German. And she has these mushrooms that grow in Germany imported. And she told me the name and I don't remember. Oh, it. come on. Don't do that to me. They I was like edge so, of my seat for the mushroom. I, I feel like it Beckinson began with Deutsch? an H. Kyle, Google like German, German mushroom mushrooms. delicacy. German mushroom delicacy. But the, dude, they were unbelievable. Yeah. No, yeah. what I don't understand. What separates... Uh, I'd like to go into the nuance of the different... Uh, Those are just creaminis. The different flavors or the different... Maybe they have all the same mushrooms. What is it that differentiates these mushrooms from one another? I'm going to ask Forrest here because... Oh, flavor profiles are massive. Really? I massive. feel like they all taste like dirt a little bit. Nah, <laughs> dude. Kyle, when we when we went mushroom hunting, I, I took Kyle mushroom hunting for the first time, I don't know, or, or early, early in this winter. Okay. He'd never picked a mushroom in his life, correct? Correct. You picked, I don't know, you are mostly filming, but you picked, I don't know, what? two dozen chanterelles sure. took home 10 pounds yep mm -hmm. how, how were those for you delicious was can, like you, elaborate? Yeah, can they, you elaborate can you elaborate yeah they're i mean they're mostly taste like garlic and butter but yeah th there's like <laughs> <laughs> that but the, like the texture is great there's just like the, the undertones of the mushroom are just like there and it tastes the different mushroom than undertones. like the regular mushrooms kyle knows store. about the mushroom undertones so look telling me so yeah, look, he's got a tongue. every mushroom has a different flavor profile some yeah. are very bland like i Porcini, those giant Mario-looking mushrooms, yeah, they don't do anything for me. They're fun to hunt because they're huge. When you find one, it's really exciting. Right. But their flavor to me is very, very bland. You can cook them like a steak, so you get like a big old meaty thing. Right, like a portobello is totally, kind of what very that's similar. For. Yeah. But then you get chanterelles, which have this really like earthy flavor. You can get black trumpets that have that that uh, truffly-like flavor, like a really pungent thing. 
I mean, it just yeah. It's I just think a kind of I think the profile. problem is is that I haven't I haven't eaten a diverse enough profile of mushrooms to be honest with you. Yeah, I've probably really only eaten like truffle and uh, and and uh, what I just said the the big meaty ones that are at the store portobello portobello and then the regular toadstool mushrooms or whatever they You've are. You've definitely not eaten those, but yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> I need to get some mushrooms from you, buddy. I'm happy, dude. My freezer's completely I'm jam-packed. coming over after this pod. Between our uh, our friends giving trip and then Santa Barbara having just a banging season, I have so many mushrooms. If you want mushrooms, I will you bring got any, you. You got any more, uh, any more uh, for fun trips coming up, like to do adventure? No. You're like, no, nah, I'm just working all year. I mean, even that, like, we went foraging, but we sold all the mushrooms and stuff. I mean, w- which we didn't need to, but it was, yeah. you know, made some pocket money out of it. <laughs> really? Nice. Um, how, how much did you sell? 25 bucks a pound. Oh, wow. All yeah. right. I think we did, I don't know, 40 pounds or something. See, dude, uh, let me have first dibs. I'll buy a pound. No, for- I'll just bring them to you. That's, I only started selling them because the freezer was so full. I'm in, baby. Bring them over. Yeah, I got you. No, my fun trips are usually, I, I, I didn't realize there was a pattern, but I am realizing there's a pattern. I have a lot of fun from basically just before Thanksgiving until about January 20th. Oh, yeah. That's, and then, yeah. yeah. And then that, the rest of the year is completely dude, slammed. And th- That's yeah. literally like I, I feel like that what is what my life has been until I had kids. And now it's just like they're still so young. It's a lot of work. But it was always like off work, like doing fun things, maybe a trip, maybe going to a few parties at people's house for Christmas holiday parties. Yep. And then boom. Back into work, everybody's like, yeah, we've been off. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's tear it up. I think my mic sounds weird. Doesn't. No, you're okay. weird. Nope. Maybe it's my ears. Weird beard. I also think we should play a game. Oh, yeah. I have a game. I have one. Okay. You have stored one? it up. You've stored it up. Bizarre animal of the week. Oh. Creature report. An old school game. A favorite. That's right. Mm. How bizarre. How bizarre. How does this game work? All right, this is Bizarre Animal of the Week. By the way, I don't know if I've ever heard that jingle before. No, I don't. I've never heard it. You know what's kind of cool too? Do you know what that first sound is? Sound effect? No. We're definitely going to get copyright infringement. That is, uh, that is uh, Octonauts. Octonauts? You don't know Octonauts? No. You don't know Octonauts? It's a cartoon. I know that. Dude, it's phenomenal. I've learned so much on Octonauts. My son watches it on Wait, Netflix. Wait, is this the one? I think we talked about this one time. You you were suggested it for They're the little kids. underwater adventurers, and they like like solve problems. Like, oh, there's a seal oh, can stuck in a cave. Super cute. It, it's, Listen, it's I adorable. love it. I love any um, kind of kids uh, show that teaches me things. It's great. It's really good. Anybody, like adults can watch it. It's, it's pretty a, solid. I want to know about this bizarre animal. All right, Tell how me. How does the game work? The game works like this. I am going to give you some clues. As I give you those clues, you're going to narrow in and guess what the bizarre animal of the week is. Well, I've I, never gotten one right. So the Brosners have hit me up personally on, on Instagram and said, can you please bring this back? It's fun to play along. Okay. I always get Same. it before you. Uh, they say that? Yeah, of course, because they know more. They're cocky. Now so, they know how to get your attention. As well. We've so got the cocky. smartest audience of any podcast. We do. That's a fact. Without Without question. All right, here we go. Clue number one. Okay. This animal is a master of camouflage blending seamlessly with its surroundings. So we know it's a I'm good thinking. So I'll just tell you what I'm yeah. thinking. This yeah. is like you're showing your work in Walk chemistry. Yes. Yeah. That's how this works. I'm thinking cephalopod, yes. but I'm, I don't have enough information to know which one yet. I'm thinking okay. either cephalopod or chameleon. Good. These are big words that you didn't know four it's, years it's ago. It's pronounced Shyamalan. Oh, yes. Sorry. Don't, don't let Kyle read it out loud. Uh, <laughs> all right. Dinosaur right. muscle. All right. So we've got a good camouflaging animal. Clue number two. This is where it starts to get fun. Okay. It possesses a long and segmented body. Okay. Oh, this has got to be in the lizard world. I'm, I'm going still chameleon. Uh, oh, actually, no, it doesn't. Okay, I think he's not done with his clue. Oh, shit. But its true nature is often hidden. It possesses a long and segmented body, but its true nature is often hidden. <gasps> okay, I'm now it's thinking an something in the centipede millipede world. Ooh, see, I you're thinking. I, I like I don't have enough at. information. Lots I know what it is. segments. You know what it is? What is it? I know what it is. Say it. It's the leaf bug. Also a good guess. But you're both wrong. Let's okay. keep going. Yeah. So our master of camouflage with a long segmented body. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just pausing for suspense. Our master of <laughs> camouflage with a long segmented body is a skilled predator. A skilled predator. Sure. Using its sharp hidden appendages what the- for hunting. Hidden appendages. Uh-huh. Hidden appendages. That makes me feel I'm like back. it's in the water. I'm going kind of back to water also, yeah. Uh, All right, keep going. Keep okay. going. Yeah. What else does it do? Give us bullet point number four. Bullet point number four is it remains largely concealed in substrate 
waiting, waiting patiently oh. for prey to approach. No, because of the ambush predator. Because mm-hmm. Forrest said substrate. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, it doesn't at the mean bottom it's, of the ocean. She could said be. dirt. She said dirt, huh, Cal? Yeah. yeah bottom but, of the ocean. Mm, don't don't you fucking try. To so this me. is, I, I, you know, you, right now in my head, you can picture all those animals that come and snap up in, yep, in the go, bottom of the ocean. Go, you see the water go, yeah, dad. Mm-hmm. What's that fish that literally goes, yeah, dad, after it eats something? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's the you dead fish. It's the you dead. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nope. Nothing yet. All right. So long segmented, mm-hmm. very well camouflaged ambush predator mm-hmm. that is also swift and powerful when striking. Oh, is yeah. yeah. Is it a mantis shrimp? Good guess. Really good guess. But it's not. I legit because think- it's not really camouflaged, right? It's no. very colorful. Yeah, that's true. No, okay. really that well, I'm legit going back to cephalopod. I'm going to some kind of octopus right here because I know which, I've seen which kind though. I don't know, but but okay. it's an octopus of some type. Well, I could rule that out by telling you it's got extremely sharp jaws. <sighs> Son of a bitch! That's your next clue. It's got. Sh- it's got okay. Substrate. It's not a shrimp. Oh, <gasps> go ahead. Or it could a trapdoor spider. Good guess. Really good guess, but no. That, yeah. that was a really good I guess. I was positive. I'm sure it's not segmented, though. A spider? I don't know. Uh, I guess it has three segments, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Can I do one more guess? Yes, of course. Piston shrimp? Pistol shrimp? Pistol. Pistol. Shrimp. No, it's really good guesses. You guys are narrowing in, by the way. Okay. You are narrowing okay. in. It's some kind of crustacean. You should have never said substrate, boy. I, I know. Yeah, that was a mistake. Really All right. That up. What if I told you that this creature... Mm-hmm. lived in the tropical and subtropical regions. Does that help narrow it in at all? Nah, I'm bad at geography. Okay. Well, what if I add one more clue? Go ahead. That'd be helpful. It's a marine organism. I already oh, knew that. Either. Tropical, Well, marine. he was still saying leaf bug and stuff. Oh, and trapdoor spider. That was a good guess. Trapdoor spider. Trapdoor spider. Those, spider's those are really good guesses, right. but it's not right. Worst guess. This has got to be an octopus. I'm going to go with a blue-ringed octopus. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the... It's called Stellar's... <laughs> Cal? He, he defaults to Stellar's anytime he's out of ideas. Stellar's <laughs> tropical cuttlefish. Yeah, yeah, that's a good guess. Okay, it's not it's a real not creature, but um, okay. especially because Stellar was an Arctic explorer. I'm well aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that is the sea cow named after him? Yeah, yeah. as is the uh, sea ape. Uh, okay. Well, I've got one more clue for you. Yeah, make it big. Drum okay. roll. Big clue here. Here we go. It's a worm. That's not the answer because there's yeah, lots yeah, of yeah, kinds yeah. of worm. Okay, it's a this marine creature. Sharp jaws. A worm. It's a worm. Sounds terrifying. I don't know a whole lot of types of worms. No, it sounds terrifying too. Like, okay, how about this? Can I give you one more clue, or for the Brosters? Yes. Yeah. Movie Dune. You've been seeing it. Yep. Yeah, seeing all the trailers for yeah. Dune too. Very inspired by that. Is it, yeah, they, I know. Uh, the tremor. To, the what, tremor creature. Yeah, pretty what is much. it called? What is it's it called? A sea worm. What Ladies and called? gentlemen, what is if it? you haven't guessed it by now, here we go. Our large, segmented, deep sea or sea substrate dwelling ambush predator with incredibly sharp jaws that is a master of camouflage found in tropical regions is the Bobbit Worm. Ah, oh, the, the Bobbit, Bobbit worm. worm. Look at that thing, dude. Is that where Lorena Bobbit got her last name? Exactly. That's that's a fact. She, yep. was named, she named the Bobbit Worm. Yeah, they she discovered it. Yeah. That she was going to cut someone's Hogan off. Yeah. <laughs> So these things are, ter- how big is a bobbit worm? They're big, right? I have no idea. Big as the beer bottle? No, because it's not saying you ever see reference. I think they get pretty big. I think they do get That's like 12. That's terrifying. Let me look at it. Oh, we need if it gets that big, that is terrifying. But can You didn't I just- have to do it with the girth part. You could have just done the <laughs> yeah. leg. You didn't have to add the dildo-y girth part. Well, listen, I, I, I'd <laughs> like to, I'm going to, you know, this is probably going to be a little <laughs> off topic, but. I tried to, uh, I've been trying to find a new book to listen to. Okay. And I've listened to two really great books and uh, sci-fi one was, books. One was still alive as authored by and read by Forrest Galante. No, no, no. A Hyperion not. series. And then I read The Three-Body Problem, which is coming out on Netflix, which is amazing. Sci-fi stuff. Okay. I tried to read Dune because that was like what Goodreads recommended to me and everybody said it was good. And I listened to this book for like six hours and I've been bored. I was bored out of my really? mind the whole fucking time. Oh, that's interesting. What is wrong with me? People say that this is one of the best sci-fi books in existence. I've heard from two different people. It's the greatest sci-fi book ever written. I got to give it another try. Yeah, I mean, Let I, us know. Weigh in in the comments. With an audio book, I imagine if you don't like the narrator, that could 
easily dude, do, dude it's do so it. huge the narrator I, is so big i can't stop thinking about this kyle can you please look up how big a bob at worm is <laughs> yeah. it's the only it's I like I, I can't stop thinking of, i'm like having a bit of yeah. an anxiety that i don't know the forest isn't typically fidgety and i see him over there like fidgeting yeah, it was driving me nuts because i just i i've never really considered oh how my big god is. so that he, is absolutely where they Google got Google images instead of just Googling it. Yeah. But this is absolutely where they got the, the, the monster. 10 feet. <laughs> Gets up to 10 feet long. Get out of here. How, what's the girth? <laughs> Four inches. inches wide. <laughs> Four inches. A couple inches wide. This is absolutely. Up to 10 feet long. That's huge. Bro, this is absolutely where they got the monster from Tremors from. I told you. I, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, dude, think about how much. That thing will need to eat. Oh, I know where I saw long. these. There was a saga on Reddit uh, in like the aquarium uh, subreddit where these things will invade your uh, your aquarium and they're like impossible to get out. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you have to like it basically how and they, they kill get all your fish. introduced to your aquarium? Look I, at how this guy's like know. capturing this one. So he put a clamp on its head. They're really hard to get out. Yeah. Look at that though. Did you see that? So back up, Kyle. <laughs> this guy puts a clamp on its head. And then just puts, so see that he clamps onto it. Yeah. And then he puts a, a water bottle filled with air so that there's constant up pressure on a string. Yeah. And it's just slowly, basically every time the worm wiggles Moves, at wiggles. all, it, it comes looser a little bit. Because these yeah. are borrowing, you know, they're like in and out of the reef and the sand. Dude, and I'm telling yeah. you, it's, Disgusting. It's, a, it's a very famous saga on Reddit about some guy. I just don't believe it because... A bobbit worm didn't come in through no, the fucking foundation you it's a common, of the house. No, I'm telling you, it's a common thing. It could be in the rock that was gotten from the ocean, or just a baby one was in there. Because their larvae are probably uh, tiny, and yeah. it's either in like fish poop or in a piece of coral that you buy. Or the I, the, I totally uh, the that. amount of controversy on this post, because people who have aquariums are so averse to these bobbit worms, because they're so fucking difficult to get out of your aquarium. Yeah, they kill your fish they and literally they do kill all kinds fish. of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, couldn't you just quickly relocate your fish that you like and then just get rid of that so, other aquarium? So I had a saltwater aquarium. I'm sure Forrest has. The, the thing that is really annoying with them is that the rocks that are in them and, and the, the water that is in them it's the, the ecosystem is built up in these rocks. It's They're alive. called live rocks yeah. and, and the water. And so it's like Say you have you've been building up an aquarium for two years. You have great rocks, keeps the whole environment filtered and great, and the water. And then a bobbit worm somehow gets introduced or grows up in there. Now, like you have to it, to, to take all the fish out and transfer it, you lose all the fucking the, the shit you've built up. All over the two or years. the organic material that makes the ecosystem healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah saltwater aquariums are a nightmare, and when they're in like a, really a nice space of a homeostasis where everything works, it's like such a Pain in the ass to touch anything at all. Oh my! Well, yeah. dude, I remember They're I had so a cool to look at though. Oh yeah, my god, are. I remember I had a saltwater aquarium back in Chicago before I moved. I only had a few simple fish. You heard that right? I had a saltwater aquarium uh, back in Chicago. I, 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 I was about to ask you if you heard the way he said Chicago. Yeah, only in a few. So, I had, uh, but I guess now I forgot what I was going to say. No, but uh, <laughs> you went I, deep Chicago when you I said had a that. saltwater You're a aquarium. <laughs> You're when I was a there. And uh, I only had a few simple fish in there, like a clownfish. I had a, uh, uh, the, 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 damn it, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like the most common aggressive saltwater fish to get st a tank started. They're like Petra? No, no, they're, oh. they're, they're black striped, uh, black and silver. Anyways, I had one of those and then like a clownfish and, uh, and like a tang in there, right? And dude, I would just get stoned and I would oh, yeah. sit in front of that tank at nighttime. And I would just look at this thing, man. And I was like, I'd sit there for like an hour and a half, just sitting there smoking every once in a Bro, while. Yeah, glowing uh, water is fascinating. I'm going to send you a video of my baby who you put in the high chair in front of the, the turtle tank in my oh, living nice. room. Nice. Two hours. He won't say anything. That's amazing. What a life. It's hack. like TV. You yeah. just turn it on and, it, and it's good TV. It's good healthy. TV. He's just watching turtles swim back. It's real back. life. Dude, it's unreal. We're, we're, we're having a pool put in. Right? Oh, are so, you yeah. moving forward with that? Yeah. A $200,000 oh, yeah. pool. That's, that's not how much it costs. Well, no, I'm not <laughs> saying you're rich. I'm just saying that it's like absurd yeah, how much having, it we're costs. We're a pool built. Yeah. And so k. My, my, the, the designer was like, do you want uh, just white lights under the water? Yeah. Or do you want colored lights? 
like where you can change the colors of each light from your it's phone. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. I was like, why even obviously ask? color because it's it's an extra thousand dollars. It ends up being four thousand dollars more. Gotcha. Wow, for that for the colored lights, a thousand each. Wow. Okay. But I'm like. Yeah, we have to put colored lights in. My wife's like, no, 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 let's just save that no, money. No, she's crazy. I'm like, I just want to sit in a chair and stare at glowing water. Yeah, purple, oh God, blue, yeah. Yeah. green. Yeah, it's Maybe great. I'm in a purple mood today. Maybe I'm in a fucking <laughs> red mood. Are you angry? You go red. Are yes. you feeling mellow? Turn the blue on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's no, cool. without so that, question. That was a non-start. Plus, I like the idea of like me sitting there Bluetooth in your pool. Yeah. <laughs> sneaking booze. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and just changing the color from my phone. I want to do it. Um, but also guys, I think it's time. What do you got? What's Ooh. going on? I think I know what time it is. Oh, shit. that's Forrest Gump you know time right there. Time! What? The Battle Royale! Love that. I hope you got mm, one. Kay. I do. Okay, thank mm, God. Kay. It was submitted by thank someone, you. but Edwin <laughs> cut off the name of who submitted it. But I like this near and dear to my heart. Okay, let's have it. Florida... Do you have a problem with invasive species? Oh, no. Florida? Yeah, just a, just a little one. I'm gonna have a little one. Chat GPT for help. <coughs> so, we're each tasked with salt. We're the new czar of invasive herps ah. in the Florida Everglades. Ah. Well, all herpes are invasive. Describe the Everglades since Peter doesn't know what it is for us. No, no, no. <laughs> let me, let me, he's dying. coughing. The Everglades <laughs> is this very, very, it's like the top, utmost survivalist place in America. It's it's a jungle and it is uh, full of marshes and dangerous animals. I don't think he said one thing correctly. <laughs> <laughs> marshes was close. It's the largest wetland in North America. That was That's all you need to close. say. From the sawgrass to the seagrass, a- baby. Let's go. All right. So you're the new czar. You're the invasive herp czar. You got to get rid of the invasive pythons, the tegu. They're Python. fucking things up, man. Yep. Python. So yep. cre- to do this, you're going to unleash an army. Off. That we have created in our labs here okay. at the Battle Royale headquarters. Nice. BRHQ. You got to take the head, the body. No, so what we're going to do is head, body, and legs together. Yep. And a special power from the animal kingdom. Okay. To create the ultimate invasive herp hunter. Love it. To get Great. rid of them all. It's just one. We're just making one. No, no, we're each gonna we're each gonna make one. Right, we're each making one. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, got it. But yep. but you're gonna whichever one you make, you're gonna have an army of them. Love it. Several hundred. Got it. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Peter, put your phone down. No, you can no, do this no, with no. Your brain. I, I need I need help with this. I don't know. People any of these who watch this on YouTube love seeing people on their phones. Yeah, straight Mint mobile, baby. It's Mint mobile. Basically, watching the Kardashians. <laughs> all right, you go um, first for us. Sure. All right, I'm gonna take a real nice one off the table early. I'm going to start with my superpower. Okay. Sniffer of a bloodhound. Great. Yep. Now, why did you take that? Absolutely unbelievable scent receptors. They can, you can train them to have a smell of a Burmese python, have a smell of a tegu, have a smell of a chameleon. Yep. And go, go find them, boy. Yeah. So you want that superpower. That superpower. I need cool. that. I need that power of scent. So I am also going to start with superpower. And it's also going to be the smelling ability, the oh. sniffer. Okay. But I'm going to take the sniffer of a brown bear because a brown bear has 10 times better smell than a bloodhound. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you can still win. I mean, it doesn't mean that yeah, you're next to Yeah, but that's just like, you, you, just, you just one dollared up me on prices, right? <laughs> I sure did. Yeah. So what I like here about the fact that I'm using ChatGPT to help me. Like ChatGPT. People understand that it's it's not me, but I think they want to hear the uh, the AI's answer, so... They do. I actually think you should do this every time. I I agree, especially when I, you know, I'm just, I have no expertise. When you're hammered. So do I have two as a snake draft right now? Same as the other 200, yeah. This is the first time that that hasn't been the case. We're going to go with the head of an American alligator because they possess a keen sense of smell and night vision crucial for detecting prey in the dark, murky waters of the Everglades. Are they known for their sense of smell? Nope. Sure okay. aren't. Yeah. <laughs> well then, its powerful jaws and sharp teeth can crush turtle shells, making it adept at capturing a wide range of prey. Which, if there were any invasive turtles there, would be useful. That would be huge. Yeah. Do okay. Me, do so, me a what favor. would be next? Shut your fucking butt. Head right. of an American alligator, and then the body. Now, this is actually a good one. This is what got me excited about mm-hmm. this because okay. even I know this scales is a good up one. to the size of the body. This yeah, is a, the body of a Florida panther. Right. Mm. You realize that whatever prompt you use, you're just using native Florida animals. Shut right? your butt. Okay. The body of a Florida panther <laughs> yeah, offers is. agility, stealth, 
and strength. This predator is yeah. well adapted to the Everglades. That's right, because it already lives there. That's Capable smart. of moving silently job, through Peter. various terrains. Good job, Peter. Eat so me. you've got the panther's body and legs and yep. size That's and right. an alligator's head on That's it. right. Yeah. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. That's amazing. Shut your butt. No, that's really great. Thank you, AI. Okay. Ah, oh, watch your feet. Sorry, my You're knee. Enormous. I thought my knee just fell out. Christ. <laughs> All right. All right. So I've got the smelling ability of a brown bear. Then I'm going to give it. I'm going to go head. Okay. I don't want a big, ferocious head. I'm going to give it the head of a white shark. Ooh. Yeah. Just that is. capable of finding a nesting ball of pythons and just, just scooping chomp, up chomp. the whole ball mm -hmm. at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want the big fucking jaws and the teeth. Okay. I nice. Keep, I keep trying to say better special ability to chat BT, GPT. I'm sorry. And it keeps uh, auto-correcting to better scrotum ability. <laughs> That's how much you type scrotum in your phone. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, all right. Well, I'm up next for two, and I am going to start with the body, and everything scales up to the body, of the harpy eagle. Oh, wow. I want the ability of flight. Smart. I want to be able to cruise long ah, distances. Very have smart. Have those giant talons that are so intimidating. Okay. And then I have the scent of a bloodhound. Mm -hmm. And so That's I just, I need something, I need something devilish. With oh, those head. talons are going to be nice too. Yeah, they're real nice. Um, think here. Let's just think for a second. We're going to go with the head. Of a mamba. Wow. Highly uh, venomous mamba. So it just comes in, quick bite, moves on. Doesn't matter if it's biting. Just leaves the carcass, yep, it's dead. Yep, and moving on. Doesn't matter. It's quick, it's aggressive. The head's small, so it flies nicely with the body. Doesn't matter if it's... Doesn't have to spend a lot of time dealing with fighting something. Comes in, either hits him with the talon, nails him with the bite, moves on. So, I mean, this thing is going to fuck things up. I mean, it yes, can smell disastrous. everything... Flying around, great vision, yep. Ooh, talons, boy. and venom. Yep, that's yeah, it. It's pretty good. That's a cool creature. Pretty mm. good. All right. I don't think I've won a battle royale in two well, years. So it's been a while. Is it me. your turn? Yeah. So, okay. I've got my right. white shark head. Mm -hmm. I, need, I don't want to sacrifice the jaws. I'm, I'm really picturing it scooping up a whole, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, um, so sure. I need a big body that's capable of moving through this terrain. Okay. And I'm not going to copy Forrest here. No, I don't do that. Be... And I can't take your panther body. That's right. It'd be lame. So this is... This Just is take, a, take a jaguar. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> bigger. Bigger. Do whatever you do. It no, doesn't I know matter because you're both going to lose after I... I'm going to take the body... Give my next pick. I'm taking the body and the size and the ability to swim mm -hmm. and traverse land Hippo. of a polar bear. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. That's Claws. ludicrous. He's going to it... be, be toasty in the glades. I didn't. We'll that shave actually, him. That we'll actually, shave him down. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna shave him down. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. It's, that, that actually messes up my final pick, which I thought was the nail in the coffin for you two. <laughs> okay. uh, I had to go through various rounds of explaining what I want to the Chat GPT, but after the third try for special ability, oh, for three on saying Chat GPT. <laughs> after the third, after the third try, it finally gave me, and this was so. I actually might have used this myself. The special ability of an electric eel. When you motherfuckers bite my. Leopard we're not, size. We're not fighting. Trying to bite you. Yeah. We, what are you bite. trying to do? Eradicate invasive species. Maybe this is why this happened. Yeah. Oh, it is. I, if I would have added that tagline to the. Uh, oh, he. What built did you think we were doing this whole time? I thought time. we were fighting. Oh, as usual. That's what a battle royale is. It's very. Amazing. It's very ridiculous. I, I'm Amazing. so annoyed. Every battle royale should be a fight to the death. By the way, agree or not? If you could just reframe comments. that as less of an idiot and just be like, and then I can electrocute giant portions of snakes and tag use and everything else it's actually a pretty good animal i think still. you just that did this for me that's why i'm a, uh, that's why you're the host of the podcast there we go nicely done all right guys so uh wait we gotta we, we need people to vote yeah brosters right. weigh and in vote. let us know who won was me. it my harpy eagle with a black mamba head and the scent of a bloodhound patrick's scent abilities of an alaskan brown bear on the body of a polar bear with the head of a great white shark I don't like whatever's going on over there. Let's just keep going. Or, or Peter's gator-headed panther that had electric eel abilities. Weigh in. Let us know whose army of critters you think would eradicate the most invasive species or I what think, your perfect animal would I be. I think I came in last because 
Yeah, you even did. though I came right out of the gates and and one up to you, big time. I used two bears. That's bullshit. You did use two bears. Yeah. That was questionable. speaking of bears. I didn't realize it until I said it back. And then Quiet, I'm like, you. Uh, speaking of bears, yeah, I've got the world's hottest gummy bear right here. Our friend uh, Andy, lovable, lovable. I'm gonna go oh, from Animal Con. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Andy Gabbard. I don't want your fingers on mine. Just pass me one over here. We're yeah. gonna each. Put this in our mouths. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. He said <laughs> no, that do you this. would be the only one that doesn't do it, so don't let him be right. <laughs> this is the world's hottest gummy bear called Little Nitro. He sent this to us Thanks, months Andy. ago. Can't we make Kyle do this? No. Isn't that what we pay Pat, Kyle Put it for? in your mouth. No, I don't. I don't do these. Yes, you I do. I don't do what I'm told. Just put it in there. Chew on it a little bit. You can spit it out if you want. I'm, I'm see trying your reaction. it. I'm trying it. What a pussy. Kyle, get over here. Let's go. <laughs> No, 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 get I, over here. I'm busy, here. I'm busy. No, no, get over it here right now. Let's go. Wait, are you going to pop the whole bear in? Yeah, we're going to eat it. Kyle, come I, over. I'm, I'm busy over no, here. No, no, you got to come over here. Stop it. Go. <laughs> Pat this is, is a Peter's pussy. Thing. Peter's meager, got a thing. Do his thing. Meager come little on, creepola. What a, what a meathead jerk you are. <laughs> go, go sit down d- at the producer's station where you Just because someone that we met at Animal Con sends an item and goes, chew on this, it'll be torturous. <laughs> Andy Gabar. No, thanks. So... That, I think all the bros right. should no, learn no, a lesson no, no. from me. Get over here. Get over here. Kyle's right, running fine. away. Are you eating it? I'm going to eat it. Are you chewing it? No, I'm sucking on it. Oh. Holy shit. It's not good. That's a bro. <laughs> How hot is it? It's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. It has warnings on it's it. It's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually it, not it's that bad. It's just cayenne. You can kind of tell it's just I cayenne. think if you chewed it, it would be a lot worse. It it's extremely spicy. It has potential to cut. Did you spit it out? Yeah. It has potential to All cause right. skin irritation if touched. Shut up. Let's do the outro because I can't keep it to my mouth too much longer. I got to get a drink. Uh, <laughs> Wildtimes.club oh, forward slash info. Go get all the bonus pods. Spit it out, boy. No, nah, so- keep it in there. All the bonus pods. No ads. Ad free. All the pods are ad free. Go to wildtimes.club forward slash info. And you know what? If you've listened this He's far. He's hiccuping. If you've listened this far. This is ridiculous. Just write in, Pat. Is meager. I, if I were you, I would write in wildtimes.club forward slash you. Patrick's the only one with half a fucking brain in his nut. Good night. Jesus. Oh my God. How hot is it? It's the hottest thing I've ever eaten, actually. Oh God. Seriously? I swear to God, yeah. Yeah, it, it, the fact and that I didn't if you bite touch into it, it, I just sucked on it. There's a warning that says don't let children it's touch gonna it. It's going to be bad for a long get a, time. A rash. It's going to be bad for hours. It's not, it's, it's weird because it's not like. You know when you eat something, you start crying and sweating? It's not like that. Just my fucking mouth hurts. Dude, my tongue it yeah. hurts. Well, keep in mind, it says this may cause skin irritation in your mouth. <laughs> it's doing that right now. It literally says consume at your own risk. We need milk around. Oh, dude. This is bad. Are you still eating it? You're still no, no, rolling, I, right, Kyle? This is bad. I'm sorry that this Peter happened to Ralph. you. Ralph. This hurts Are really bad. Are you still bad. eating it? I, this hurts really bad. He's still eating it. No, I went and got a LaCroix. Did I get a boba tea earlier? Can I have that, please? Can I have it's my got coffee? It's it. got cream in it. Yeah. <laughs> you are the only smart one. I always give into peer pressure so quickly. See, like something like when He's you brought the smart, smelling man. salts, like I'm like, okay, this well, isn't going to. fun. Yeah. 15 seconds, right? 20 seconds. But like, I don't like You know, I'd like shit. to defend the position. It was really, he just said he knew Pat wouldn't do it. And I just wanted to prove him wrong. Who looks, who looks smart right now? Kyle looks smart. And Pat. Papa P. Big win. There's no way I was doing that. I don't do these things. If you know you don't like something, why are you doing it? Look look at him. Look at Peter. <laughs> He's in agony. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not even happy that I touched the box. It's pretty unpleasant. <clears throat> One to ten, how much did it make your mouth hurt? Uh, it was a seven for a shorter period of time than when I've tried to eat like really spicy Indian or Thai food. Okay. I mean, I can still hear that your throat's a bit irritated. Yeah, no, it's an awful, awful feeling. Look at Peter. You have to do a bonus pod. Peter's still eating it, by the way. (sighs) Why are you doing this? It's better than a sigh. Check check your pulse. I'm okay. You might be having a heart attack. It's 210 right now. (sighs) Yeah, I'm good. We can. I already did the outro. (laughs) No, we're just watching you. I hope you're still filming. We're leaving all this in. Can you you zoom in? Do you have zoom power on this? Zoom in on his face. What are you drinking? (laughs) Coffee. With cream. Can you um, sing the national anthem? <laughs> oh, see, can you see? It's pretty good. It's actually nice. Yeah, it's nice. Thanks By for doing that. the dawn's early light. It's like Chris Stapleton. Is the, is the gummy still in your mouth? No. 
What so pro? Did you try? Did you try chewing it? I did. I took a couple chews. Why? Look at the tears forming on his eyelid. I don't yeah. know, man. Say no to peer pressure, folks. <laughs> Tried tequila suicides instead. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Good right. night, everybody. Let's stop. Oh shit! Sir. <laughs> All right. Good night. Didn't You're realize. bawling. You're literally bawling. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> Holy shit! As great as I am, it looked like you just found out someone died. Yeah. <laughs>